for our Disney fans out there, when Elsa was about to be crowned queen, mm. uh, Anna woke up and she said, ah, it's coronation day. That's what today is. That's what we're talking about on HC Daily. <laughs> You're listening to another episode of HC Daily, a daily devotional podcast that you can listen to at home or on the go. We believe that you can grow as much as you want to grow spiritually, and this podcast can be a part of your daily growth plan. So, whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on Spotify, or your favorite podcast app, we're glad you're here. Now, let's join our hosts, Jeff Forrester and Chris Zarbaugh in the studio. Chris. Yes. So... Uh, I was thinking about the, what question I was going to ask you at the beginning of this podcast. And uh, you know what? I thought I would ask you a question about the end. When it's all done for Chris Arbaugh, mm. what are people going to say at your funeral? Wow. Wow. What a question. <laughs> well, so, what do you want them to say? How about that? So, uh, listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we don't want to get into the nitty gritty of what people are going to say. I think I can anticipate that. Well, I, I, what, what do you want them to say? Well, honestly, I think, I hope, and I, I believe, hopefully, that the word that they'll be able to use, which would be the best compliment anybody can give about anybody's life, is that he was a person that was found faithful, hmm. right? So he was found faithful. He was a faithful father. Yeah. He was a faithful, you know, pastor, a faithful child of God, a Christian. He was just found faithful. So if I can get to the end of my life and be a person that... <laughs> that that is faithful in all things. Hmm. It, it it would be the I would think the highest goal that I would shoot for. Well, that's what the Bible says: the servant is supposed to be is faithful, right? Hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's a good one. Um, so you know, people are going to be laughing a lot at your funeral. I right? hope so. So what are they going to laugh about at your funeral? Uh, well, probably, <laughs> you know, my no filter. Uh, you know, my family will have a bunch of inside jokes, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a bunch of uh, sayings that I that I that mm -hmm. I always that I have. I think. And uh, I think my friends would probably laugh about the absurdity of my stories. Yes. Because uh, <laughs> my life's theme is making memories. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I'll just do something crazy just so that I can say that I did it. Yeah. And so I'm like, you know, I'm driven by the fact that I want to be able to say that I did it. Right. You remember that scene, scene in Transformers? It always comes back to movies for me. But Transformers number one, where it, the car door opens and then uh, Charlotte Wolf looks yeah. at uh, whatever her name is. And says, uh, get in the car. And she goes, you want to get in the car? And he goes, 50 years from now, do you want to look back and say, I didn't get in the car? Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's just, yeah. that's the way I want to live my life. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to die living, mm -hmm. right? I want to die having really lived, yes. not just survived. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's great. I think, I think that's true. I think that's what people are going to be laughing about, too, is the crazy, absurd stories that uh, somehow happen. You know, we, we have this theory, and I think we've said this before on this podcast, we have this theory, both of us do that God seems to give teaching pastors like four extra lives. Yeah, right? a lot of stories. <laughs> Just there's so many crazy stories about, yeah. uh, about life. Yeah, I think so, so too. That's <laughs> fun. So I, I don't know why I asked that question. It just seems like, a, you know, sometimes we just have goofy questions. And this one's one that I, I do ponder sometimes is when it's all done for me, because it's temporary life, what do I want people to think about me? What's the legacy I mm -hmm. want to have left? And then what are they going to laugh about? And I think you gave great answers. That's good. Well, thanks. Well, it also is very appropriate for the passage that we're going to read today. Yeah, because David's passing off the scene now. We've yeah. already referenced it before, but this is this is the bigger the bigger passage on it. And uh, Solomon is now coronated king. The speech David gave um, uh, previously, and then collecting all of the stuff for the temple. Those two things happened before, and then now Solomon is actually coronated king. And it says this in, in uh, chapter 29 of First Chronicles. We'll read in verse 21. It's just a short passage here. It says, The next day they brought 1,000 bulls, 1,000 rams, and 1,000 male lambs as burnt offerings to the Lord. They also brought liquid offerings and many other sacrifices on behalf of all Israel. They feasted and drank in the Lord's presence with great joy that day. And again they crowned David's son Solomon as their new king. They anointed him before the Lord as their leader, and they anointed Zadok as priest. So Solomon took the throne of the Lord in the place of his father David, and he succeeded in everything. And all Israel obeyed him. All the officials, the warriors, and the sons of King David pledged their loyalty to King Solomon. And the Lord exalted Solomon in the sight of all Israel, and he gave Solomon greater royal splendor than any king in Israel before him. Then in verse 26 it says, So David, son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel. He reigned over Israel for 40 years, seven of them in Hebron and 33 in Jerusalem. 
He died at a ripe old age, having enjoyed long life, wealth, and honor. Then his son Solomon ruled in his place. All the events of King David's reign from beginning to end are written in the record of Samuel the seer, the record of Nathan the prophet, and the record of Gad the seer. These accounts include the mighty deeds of his reign and everything that happened to him and to Israel and to all the surrounding kingdoms. That's amazing. So what a neat way to end this, uh, you know, the life of, of David and then handing things off to his son Solomon. So I don't know if you're like this, but I, I try to sense the emotion in the scriptures when it says they, they sacrificed 3,000 uh, lambs and, and bulls and animals. Yeah. And then it says this one verse, they feasted and drank in the Lord's presence with great joy that day. Oh, it was I a try, party. I try to picture myself being there and thinking to myself, this this was a great feast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I just can't even imagine. Well, it's just this massive celebration. Mm. A lot of times we think that, you know, because it says that he, he sits on, where does it say? <clears throat> um, Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord. Right? That that's what it says there. And this is a worship moment, but they're throwing a big party in this worship moment. Mm-hmm. God, it's your kingdom. God, you've given us a new king. God, you set us up to start building your temple and we are worshiping you, but it's this massive celebration at the same time. You know, worshiping the Lord and celebrating all that he's doing in our lives, uh, those things go hand in hand. The joy of the Lord, you're talking about your friend who has just this joy of the Lord. Um a celebration, um, joy, the feasting here, all of this is all an act of worship. It starts off with the sacrifices and just goes on into the celebration. And a lot of people tend to sell, uh, separate the worship side from the party side. But for them, it was all together. It's all the same thing. Mm. Man, how much better would our would our walk with God be if we thought of our life that way? You know, it, it's so funny. One time I went to this family camp that we did at Spring Hill, and there was like 1,200 people. Uh <laughs> you know, with their kids and everything else. And they were there at this camp and we were invited to be the, like sort of like the featured speaker on, on, on Saturday night. That was sort of the, the, you know, the big message of, of the, of the week. And we had not heard the previous speakers there, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and, and they were our co-pastors. And so, uh, you know, they weren't the big pastors. They were just the junior pastors. Mm-hmm. Right? right. And so <laughs> totally, wow. totally making a joke. Yeah. Until you got there. Yeah. No, just listen. <laughs> so anyway, listen, I get there. And when it came down to us trying to give parental advice on like, how do you raise up godly children and, you know, teach them and, and raise them up in the right way. Liz and I actually took the stance, which all this is connected mm-hmm. to what you just said. We said, you know what? We really didn't, uh, we really didn't have like, okay, this is God time, you know, like we're going to sit down and have devotions, although we did some mm-hmm, of mm-hmm, some of that. Mm-hmm. But I said, what we really try to do is sprinkle God in in every single thing that we did. Mm-hmm. So there really wasn't like, uh, okay, you know, from nine o'clock to nine 30 is God time. And then, you know, then there's not God time. It was all God time. Right. But it wasn't just like this rule, you know, oppression kind of thing. We just kind of made sure that God was in every single thing we did always. And so it was just a constant. And uh, and so what I, what I said in this message that made the other guys mad, I found out later, is I said, so guess what? I said, if you're not a person that plans with intentionality, I said, y- y- I think you can be off the hook. Mm-hmm. I said, so you don't have to like be that person that says, oh, I got to be intentional uh, about, you know, having a certain time. I said, just be intentional with your life. Well, come to find out. The, the the message right before talked about you have to have an intentional God time. <laughs> so I sort of blew yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, I yeah. blew it. But everybody came up to me afterwards, of course, the ones who sure. are who are like me, and they said, We felt a breath of fresh air just knowing like, oh, I'm not that organized, you right. know? And these guys are talking and we're like, nobody's that way. That guy's crazy. Mm-hmm. And uh but it's what you're talking about here. Yeah. It's it's having God through through the whole thing. Your life is just worship. saturating your life. Yes, yeah. it's supposed to be that way. Yeah, it, it, it's not something that your kids are just going to catch. Right. It does have to be intentional, but it can be intentional in the moment. Right. Hey, you know, so where David says, God gave us all these things. Um, so that's natural. It, it doesn't have to be that you have to wait until, you know, 30 minutes before bedtime to sit down and tell your children that God gave you the money to be able to buy your house. You can just mention it when you're mowing the lawn. You know, God gave us this lawn. Right. God gave us this house. That, yeah. And, right. And, and these, and that's that's how I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to say. Yeah. And so I feel like I feel like that was better mm-hmm. because it wasn't like uh, you know because whenever nine o'clock comes, if if that's your God time, nine to nine thirty, it's a, it feels like a have to, right? I it have, can. Yeah. Yeah. It can yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And uh, and so I'm thinking to myself, no, it's 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 not that way. 
So what we used to do is we used to say, hey, let, let's do this. Yeah. And we used to do it sort of like non-scheduled, uh, but we would definitely have devotions. Yeah. We, so there are people who honor the Lord in their schedule because mm-hmm. they're just very precise, scheduled people. Yes. get up at exactly the same time every day. They get their coffee at the exact same time. They brush their teeth at the same time, take their shower at the same yep. time. Uh, uh, the same cereal. The same cereal. The, they same. drive the exact same route. They listen to the exact same radio program. They walk into the office within 30 seconds every day. You're describing my son-in-law. Yeah, yeah. Very, very <laughs> precise. So in that situation, um, perhaps the precision of the way that they raise their family having precision in their in their schedule is important. You're not that guy who gets up precisely at exactly the same time, drives exactly the same route, eats exactly the same breakfast. So your personality is different. So I think what you do is all of us have to worship God and honor God in the personality he gave us, and in the style of life that we live. But what you have with David, whether he was super precise or whether he was, you know, um, uh, uh, living life, just responding, which it seems like a lot of us responding, what he was doing was putting God at the center and some of his sons caught it, and some of his sons didn't, right? Like he never disciplined his one son, the Bible says, right? So there's some failures in the parenting, but we all make mistakes in parenting. Where, where he succeeded with Solomon was apparently Solomon really picked up on the fact that his dad always had God at the center of his life. And that really is, I think, the big picture here of what's happening. It says that uh, David's life was long, and he enjoyed life, and he uh, ruled over Israel for 40 years. It sort of sums up all of that, uh, 33 years in Jerusalem. And it says that the events of his life are recorded in Samuel the seer, uh, the record of Nathan the prophet. We know who Nathan is. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily know who Samuel the seer is or or Gad the seer, but my life Samuel the seer was Samuel the prophet. That's what they called him was Samuel the seer. Oh, that was was Samuel. Same guy. And then Gad the seer pops up a couple of times in David's story. We, we, we read one of the stories where Gad was the prophet who showed up. Yeah. It says the seer was someone who received messages from God uh-huh. uh, for the nation in visions or dreams. Mm-hmm. So uh, just, you know, it, it's uh, I just thought that was noteworthy because uh, the three places where David's story was recorded were three godly sources. Yes. They were three people who cared about God, loved God, worshiped God. And so think about you, well, well, not you, but like if a person were to rule as a king over millions of people, and uh, you know it's it's recorded with these godly men because yeah. most of his reign was serving God. Right. So they may have been the the ones who wrote, you know, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. They could have been contributors in these. Like we know Samuel wrote up until Samuel dies. But there's a few more chapters after Samuel dies that somebody else had to fill in the gaps on the finishing out the rest of David's story, right? And these other guys may have contributed to First and Second Chronicles, First and Second Kings, uh, as well. It seems to be hinting that way, and certainly the people in that day would have known what they wrote and who who wrote what pieces. We just don't know now, other than the Samuel portions. But um, you know, it says here in the. the the note for 25, Solomon surpassed his father's wealth and splendor, which is cool. Mm-hmm. David's success resulted from his vital relationship with the Lord, and he passed his spiritual values on to Solomon. Any money or power we leave to our children is far less valuable than the spiritual legacy we, leave, we pass on to them. So the big question that they're asking is what spiritual inheritance will our children receive? In what specific ways are we trying to pass on the legacy today? Which kind of mm-hmm. speaks to what you know you were talking about before. Yeah, and, and we mentioned this a long time ago because it's been a few podcasts since we've talked about the story of David and Bathsheba, but uh, everybody should be reminded that Solomon's mother is Bathsheba. Right. So a story that started out with sin and with like uh, r- scandal and rumors and mm-hmm. a feeling across the entire nation of, you know, this crime, this grotesque sin that David did, uh, it, it gets redeemed. And then Solomon becomes not only richer, but then they, you know, he becomes a person who's revered. And then, of course, later on, we find out that Solomon becomes the wisest man yeah. who's ever lived. Right. And the Bible says there is no other man who's ever lived or will live that is going to be wiser than Solomon. And we'll right. get to that in a minute. So he ends up writing, you know, Ecclesiastes, the Song of Solomon, Proverbs, uh, Proverbs and he writes so many things filled with wisdom that they're, it's uncanny. And so here's Solomon now revered as one of the greatest kings ever, and that just shows you that God's redemption is wonderful. Yeah. You know, something that started off with ugh, just so much yuck, and then all of a sudden we look back and we think, man, look what God did from it. 
Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I, w- I was wanting to point that out too. You know, Sal- or David had a bunch of sons. He had a bunch of wives, right? So we know of eight yeah. wives, plus he had, you know, probably a couple dozen um, concubines. His sons from his other wives... Which, which, which is bad, by the way. Yes, yes, these aren't acceptable ideas. But his sons from his other wives, um, most of them did not turn out well. Mm. Solomon did. Solomon is the one, yeah. right? That you go, wow, that kid... The difference, they all had the same dad. The difference is Solomon had a different mom. Mm. Maybe it was Bathsheba is the one who had built in the values and the faith that was so important, right, for him. And so David's faith was important to him. He just didn't seem to pass it on to his other sons. Not as much. Um, you know, and, and there's a lot of people who will say, well, you know, my faith is very private, and uh, I, hope, I hope my family just knows how important my faith is to me. But it looks like maybe Bathsheba's the one who passes on the faith of the family to her son. She, you know, and, and this really highlights the idea that this failure in their lives, right? They have this affair. Um, she gets pregnant. Uh, those kind of failures, that's an event in your life, but it doesn't have to define your life. And so she, uh, you know, raises this son that is, becomes a godly man, especially at the early portion of his ministry, really becomes a, a great godly man dependent on God and recognizing that everything he has comes from God. And I would say that the difference between, you know, um, Solomon and Adonijah or Solomon and, and Absalom or Amnon would be the mom. Yeah. That, that's the differentiator. Well, um, so I'm sure you've heard this before, just like I have, but uh, Proverbs 31 yes. is, is written about the godly woman. Yeah. And there are a lot of scholars that uh-huh. would say that it was actually Solomon who wrote uh-huh. this, right? Because he wrote, you know, Proverbs. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. uh, but it starts off by saying, the sayings of King Lemuel c- contain this message, which his mother taught him. That's right. And so there's a lot of scholars that think that uh, Lemuel was a, a known name for Solomon, Solomon and that right. it's the same mm-hmm. person. Uh, but if but if that's true, if if it is Solomon, and it would seem to be... Well, he, we, we do know he wrote all the other right, chapters of, right. of Proverbs. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. But but listen, the very first thing that comes out of yeah. his, if that's Bathsheba, this is the first thing that comes out of uh, her mouth. Oh, my son, oh, my son of my womb, my son of my vows, do not waste your strength on women, on those who ruin kings. <laughs> so think about that. That, that. that would be the first piece of advice from Bathsheba, wouldn't it? Right, right. And so, you know, so Bathsheba is, in this case, if that's true, she's a woman who uh, has seen firsthand. And, and by the way... It, it, let's not underestimate the fact that Bathsheba was the only wife of David that was recorded, uh, you know, that we were able to understand that she went through something really, really difficult. Oh, yeah. So she saw God's hand, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. She saw God's punishment. She saw God's mercy, God's judgment, God's love. And she saw David responding in agony and in pain uh, over their situation. So out of all the wives, she's the only one in the scriptures where it's recorded where they went through pain and they witness the power of God. Yes. So it stands to reason the that... Di- she... The discipline of God and then the blessing of God. Yes, yes, both, yes, both of those. Uh-huh. And so it stands to reason that, that that's, you know, it formed her, it shaped her, Yeah. right? Yeah. So, and yeah. when you're going through God's discipline, God's heavy hand doesn't last forever. Hmm. David wrote about that many times, right? That, that God, God has a heavy hand, but it won't last forever. God, you know, restore back to me the days of my of my joy and all those things. David was writing in his sin, understanding he's being, you know, confronted by God. He's being, you know, um, disciplined by God. We would say punished by God for his behavior. And you know what? If you feel like you're in that position where, listen, I know I sinned, I did the wrong thing, come to the same place David did, which was repentance, and then understand it won't last forever. Repentance ultimately leads to uh, God's grace being extended. And when grace happens, it's like a, a flood of joy. It's fresh air again. And when they came out the other side of that, this is where Solomon came from, was from the blessing side. After the, the judgment of God, the blessing comes, and what a breath of fresh air he is to his mother and to mm-hmm. his father, and he winds up becoming a great leader. You know, the last thought that I have on this passage is uh, this is a celebration of the coronation of Solomon. And it, even though that everybody's, you know, recognizing uh, you know who he is, and and they're they're dedicating his their loyalty to him, and they're trying to figure out what it means, and they're celebrating. Um, my last thought is is that God gives to us roles of influence. Mm-hmm. So you know, I'm a I'm a father. I'm also a friend. Mm-hmm. I'm also a pastor. I'm all you know. I'm a I'm a coworker. I'm a I'm a neighbor. And so God gives you these arenas in our life, you know, in your life and my life, 
that have influence. And uh, so Solomon is celebrating, you know, a promotion, <laughs> money, mm-hmm. uh, fame, power, control, all these things. Uh, at the same time, uh, it comes with this responsibility. And so I, it just it causes me to reflect and think to myself, okay, what are the roles that God has given me? And and I'm not just going to celebrate just because, you know, I'm a new dad or I got a new promotion or, you know, or, or I've, I've been given this position of, of ministry. It is, okay, God, how can I, you know, recognize the, the, the roles that you give me and how can I do my very best to shine in those roles? Yeah. And then with our children, as Deuteronomy says, when we're walking by the way, when we're sitting at the table, when we're laying down at night, mm-hmm. all the time putting God center, center for the family uh, at all times so that it's not just something that they are, have imposed upon them, but something that they grow up in faith so that they embrace the faith for themselves, which I think is what we see with Solomon. So, I agree. That's I great. Agree. All right, well, that's a good place to wrap up, and we'll see you next time on HC Daily. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this podcast, please help us spread the word by liking this episode and sharing it on your social media platforms. Be sure to leave a comment and review, and don't forget to give us five stars. When you do, you help us reach even more people who need a daily devotional like HC Daily. If you'd like to hear more from Chris and Jeff, they're both teaching pastors at Heritage Church located in Southeast Michigan. You can get more of their messages by clicking on the Messages tab at heritagechurch.com. Be sure to join us again soon for another episode of HC Daily.